Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. So it's finally Record Store Day Black Friday. Today I'm going to be talking about how the process went for me, some of the great titles I picked up. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you check them out. There's links for the Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlist that we put together a week, and the Patreon page. Make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. So I just got back from the record store a little bit ago. And the first thing I've got to say is it was busier than I thought it was going to be. As much as I've heard people complain about the record store day Black Friday list this year, I really wasn't expecting big crowds. And they, there was definitely more people there this year than there were last year in comparison to, to Black Friday. So like always, I went to Dearborn Music here in Dearborn, Michigan. Easily one of the best record stores around, you know, one I go to pretty regularly. And um, actually, by the time this video comes out, I'll drop a link down below. You can go check out their website. All their leftover RSD stuff should be up online if you're still looking for something. But, you know, when I went out there, you know, I, I got out there about 3 o'clock in the morning, which is really late for, for me for a record store day. Typically, I'm out there you know, around one, you know, if, if it's a big record store day, if there's a big list in April, it's like midnight that I'm out there. But for Black Friday, it's normally about one that I got out there. But this year, because there wasn't anything like super limited that I was looking forward to, to, to grabbing, I knew I didn't have to be one of the first ones in line. So when I got there at three o'clock in the morning, I was all, actually only fifth in line, which I was kind of surprised by. I was expecting there to be you know, a few more people in line at that time, but I was, so I got out there, set my stuff up, set my chair and stuff up. And I'd say by, by four o'clock, there was at least probably 20 people in line, which is, I, I was kind of surprised that people were already coming out that early for, for Black Friday. So Dearborn Music does Record Store Day a little differently than a lot of other stores. What they do is when they open up their doors, they hand out these wish lists. You kind of mark, go through a mark off what you want, and then you take your ticket. And they go in order and pull what you're looking for. You know, it does take some of the some of the fun out of going through and digging around for records. But also, it's nice to know that if I'm, if I'm one of the first, you know, 10 or 15 people in line, I'm probably going to get what I'm, what I'm looking for. So in comparison to Record Store Day Black Friday last year, I had to work last year. So I didn't actually get out to the record store. It's the latest I'd been there for any kind of record store day. I didn't get out to the record store until about 7.45 in the morning. And I was about 40th in line. I think it's it like 40 or 50 in, in line. So when the record store opened up this morning, they opened up a little later. They opened up at 8.30 instead of 8 o'clock in the morning. There was at least 100 people online. I'll put a picture up on the screen here. The line actually stretched all the way down the front of the building and around the corner a little bit also. So, like I said, easily 100 plus people online, which is a lot for a record store day Black Friday, at least in my area. I know there was people online there that said that they got there, you know, 15, 20 minutes before their store opened and were like seventh in line. That was very, uh, that was not the, the case in my area. Even like looking around other record stores in my area, the lines seem to be longer than, than in years past. So overall, I think it was another successful record store day. You know, huge crowds at the record store. Of course, that's what's there for, to, to help celebrate independent record stores, really drive foot traffic through those doors. And uh, yeah, I picked up some great stuff. I picked up a couple of things I wasn't really looking to, to grab, but I ended up coming across anyway. I did grab a copy of 13 by Black Sabbath. This is, uh, this is an album I've been trying to find for, you know, the last several months. It uh, I've looked at it a couple of times. And I always end up putting it back. And then I couldn't find it for a while. So I grabbed a used copy while I was at the record store. Because that's the other thing that a lot of record stores do. Is not only are they putting out a lot of RSD stuff. They're also putting out a bunch of used stuff to, to go through. And uh, so this is the only used album that, that I grabbed for record store day. I will say this is just the plain black version. I was looking for the orange version. But, you know, for, for the price of it, I think it was like, you know, 12 bucks. I, I think can't uh, can't beat the price for, for that album. And then there was one RSD title that... I kind of went back and forth on. I don't think I talked about it in any of the RSD videos, but I ended up deciding to grab a copy of it. And that's a U2 Under a Blood Red Sky. This is the uh, the what, 40th anniversary edition that they were releasing for, for Record Store Day. Yeah, I'm not the biggest U2 fan, and that's kind of why I wasn't really considering it. But I do love that early period from the band, and this is definitely a great live album. I'm going to go ahead and open this thing up real quick. Next, I guess before I open it up, it just says on the hype sticker here, 40th anniversary limited edition gatefold. Newly remastered, red vinyl, uh, includes a large two-sided poster. There's the, uh, the hype sticker there. So it's the jacket with the uh, shrink wrap off of there. Front cover. It's the back cover there. And then this is just a, just a standard little gatefold. 
and this should be, I don't think there's a booklet or anything involved, included in this. Looks like, uh, just a little lyric insert here. I'm going to see where the poster is in here. I think this is the poster here. Yeah, this is just a big, let's try and fold this thing out here. So, just a big poster of the cover. And a shot from the uh, the band on stage. Well, so I, you know, I don't really get into posters, but uh, you know it's kind of a cool added bonus if you do. And then the printed insert is just another shot of the band. And then this is going to be on a red vinyl here, just a solid red. I mean, I'm not a big fan of solid colors. I wish it was uh, translucent or or something like that. But uh, you know it doesn't look too bad. And then an album that I was surprised that a lot of people were grabbing is Punk Goes Christmas. So on the this is the 10th anniversary edition, 16 punk rock holiday classics. You got Yellow Card, All Time Low, Set It Off, New Found Glory, The Somerset, August Burns Red, The Ready Set, Real Friends, and more. It's on uh, looks like it's on green vinyl. It's a uh, there's the the hype sticker there. A little better of a shot with the uh, the shrink wrap off of there. There's the front cover there listing of all the songs and bands on the back and then this is on a gatefold nice little wreath there in the middle and all the uh, listings all the song listings on there and i think this is a, this is a 2 lp at 45 rpm nice uh, translucent uh translucent green there and then disc two should be the same which, yeah, it's cool. I, th I think they should have done a red and a green. I think it would would have went better with the uh, Christmas theme, I think. Another album I was pretty excited to grab when I saw it on the list is the self-titled debut album from the Goo Goo Dolls. Like I said in my preview video, if all you know is like their pop rock stuff from the mid to late part of the 90s, their first two albums are very different. Johnny Resnick doesn't even sing on this album. So I don't think, he's, I don't think he actually started singing until their second or third album. Uh, you know, their first two albums are very much like straightforward punk albums, very different than like Name or Iris or anything else from their career. So got a nice little uh, Black Friday uh, OB strip on here, 1987, pure raw punk. It's on uh, red and clear vinyl. Like I said, it's going to be a great release. It was one I was definitely looking forward to grabbing. And then the back of the OB strip, you got just the, the track listing on there. I think it looks pretty cool. You know, as... As much as I like keeping those Obi strips, I might put that one inside this uh, this record sleeve, just because it kind of blocks part of the album artwork. I love just the the way it looks. That's the it without the uh, the shrink wrap on there. Yeah, the back cover there. And like I said, even if you look on the listing, uh, it might be I don't know if it's on here or if it's just on the Obi strip, but uh, it lists Robbie is just so Robbie's their bass player is the only one listed as vocals on this album. You know, Johnny Resnick doesn't even sing on this album. Like I said, very, very different. Uh, you know, look at the, Johnny's got some great hair in the, uh, in those picks on there. Not that, uh, I mean, I can't complain, but uh, nice, uh, nice printed insert in here. Track listing on the back side of it. And then this is on, well, that's actually a pretty sweet looking col uh, color to it. You know, just a red and clear splatter there i don't know it's not really a, a splatter i don't even know what i call that but uh it looks pretty cool and before i get to the last couple of albums i think there's a couple albums that really drove people out to, to record store day this year i think the olivia rodrigo release was absolutely huge i saw a ton of people i would say it's probably the one album that sold out the fastest uh it was gone pretty quick i saw a lot of people asking for it a lot of people looked really disappointed when they were told that uh, it wasn't available anymore. You know, so I think that one sold pretty quick. And then there was a lot of people there for the Post Malone compilation, too. So I think both of those two albums, along with a lot of other releases, uh, really kind of drove people out this year for, for Black Friday. There was one non-vinyl related uh, album I was looking forward to, to grabbing this year. Of course, that is this uh, Dr. Dre, The Chronic. 30th anniversary CD. It's in the original long box, which I absolutely love. I would love to see more CDs get released this way. But this thing just looks sweet. That's the uh, the front cover there, and then that's the the back side there. And uh, you know, I've always been a huge fan of this album. In my opinion, it's probably the greatest rap album ever released. Actually, I got a copy of the 
uh, in new Interscope release right over my shoulder here. It was uh, part of the new Interscope subscription service that they were doing. It's a new new album artwork. You know, it looks really cool. It's a great sounding release. But like I said, just love this one. It was uh, definitely on my I'm a, on my must have list. And actually, I was looking forward to this one so much. I almost went to a second record store just so I could pick up another copy of it so I didn't have to open this one. But because uh, I don't have it on, on CD, uh, you know, I, I needed a copy of it on CD, which made it even better to, to grab a copy of it. So let's open this thing up here. All right, so I do have to admit, this thing looks pretty sweet. I absolutely love this release. So it opens up like a book here. You get your CD in here, and then you also get your rolling papers. Nice little picture uh, on the inside there. And then the, uh, the CD itself, yeah, I love that it's got the old retro look of the old uh, jewel case on there. And, uh, you know, it's individually wrapped also. So that's pretty cool. They did a great job of just replicating it and giving that retro kind of feel to it. And then, of course, it's got the, the CD on the inside there. Uh, you know, just uh, great. Um, I think that's awesome. This is really cool. I'll be able to find some place to display the long box. And then the last three albums I picked up were all ones where... I was really looking forward to them, and then I saw the pricing on them and almost considered not grabbing them, but I love all three of these albums. I love all three of these releases. You know, I guess when it comes to pricing, you know, really the only way to, to fight against high prices that is to fight it with your with your wallet and not pick up those, these releases. So I guess I'm part of, the, part of the problem. But the first release, this is kind of the one that I had the biggest issue with. This is 21st Century Liability by Youngblood. It's a five-year anniversary release, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. It's really expensive, but also I guess it does have a, uh, a signed insert in here. I think that's what it says on here. Uh, five-year anniversary edition of Youngblood's debut album. New artwork, never before, uh, never heard before bonus track and uh, tracks from Live at Wembley. So I guess it is good. At least there are some additional tracks included in there. But I love the, uh, the kind of chrome artwork on the front there and uh, on the back. Well, they got the shrink wrap off. You can see the it, uh, you can see the artwork a little bit better. I mean, I mean, so at least you're getting something a little a little extra with it. Looks really really cool. It's got some bonus tracks on here. Uh, like I said, it should have uh, I guess just a standard insert in here. So here's the uh, the insert that comes along with it. I guess if I hold it the right way. And then this is like a fake signature on there on the on the little jacket there and that's on just a translucent pink vinyl i think the next one is it's got to be the most expensive record store day you know single album release that i've ever bought outside of like box sets or specialty pressings or anything like that you know i love this artist i don't have any of his stuff on vinyl you know i i think it's a good compilation to to grab if you're a, a rap fan of course, that is I Am Music by Lil Wayne. I'm a huge Lil Wayne fan. Had, had been for a long time. His stuff isn't really available on vinyl. Uh, especially a couple, a couple of the few albums, I guess, they are that are available are pretty are pretty pricey. So, you know, it, I, I'm good with, with just grabbing a compilation, even though it is was uh, it was pretty expensive. I was actually surprised it didn't have any kind of real uh, hype sticker to it. Just an RSD Black Friday sticker, which you're not really buying an album for a hype sticker anyway. But... Uh, you no, know, just one of those little added things to, to uh, release. So that's what the artwork looks like outside the uh, outside of the shrink wrap. There's the back cover there, and then this is a pretty nice gatefold. It's got a picture in there and track listings. And I know at this point I'm probably just beating a dead horse. I say it all the time, but if I'm gonna spend fifty plus bucks for a for an album, at least put it in a nice you know poly lined sleeve or something. Because these paper sleeves are garbage, and all they do is scratch up your records. But it's on really nice translucent red vinyl there. It's a disc one. And then disc two is the same color. And then the last album I picked up seemed to be the, another one of those big movers. Seemed like there was a lot of people getting it. There was a lot of the copies of this that were, that were pressed also. And that is the new Post Malone compilation, the Diamond Collection. I guess he holds the record for the most Diamond uh, singles. 18 tracks on here. It's a 2LP release. You know, another cheap-looking little hype sticker on there, which I know doesn't really mean a whole lot. But, uh, you know, when you spend, you know, what I what I spent on this, almost 50 bucks for this album, you know, it, it's little things like that that I guess kind of irritate me. And I guess the way, the way I look at it is if you're, 
you know, charging a premium for it, at least have a nice hype sticker on there, at least have polyline sleeves, which I'm sure this probably doesn't. And well, this has, looks like this has uh, printed inner, inner sleeves in there, so at least that's nice. But uh, here, I guess I'll show you the jacket real quick. This is the uh, front cover there, a back cover, and then this is a gatefold, which it's just, uh, you know, it's a rather interesting uh, gatefold. And then they printed, this is actually a cutout inside the gatefold for the uh, the sleeve, the printed sleeve here. So you get uh, this one printed sleeve with the lyrics on the back. And then you've got, uh, that's the other insert, more lyrics. And it looks like there's a booklet that comes with this also, which that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a nice, nice booklet uh, kind of, well, actually it's not a booklet, it's a poster it looks like. Like I said, it's probably one of the more interesting posters I've seen in a release. I'm not sure if anyone's going to want to hang up some uh, diamond encrusted teeth with the uh, with the, just uh, track listings on there. But I don't know. It's uh, I've never been much of a of a poster person, so it's uh, something I'm not really all that interested in. And then these should be on crystal clear vinyl. So that's pretty clear. It's a nice looking release. And then disc two should be the exact same. I will say that uh, I probably mention this every time I do one of these videos, but especially with RSD releases, make sure you go through them when you first get them. Make sure there's no issues with it. Make sure there's no, you know, two of the same disc in there. I was actually talking to somebody in line uh, this morning uh, before the store opened that she's been fighting with her with a record label for, you know, over a year now because she got an RSD release and the outside of it was never trimmed. So she's not actually able to play it on her on her turntable because it uh, you know sticks out too far. And she's even contacted other uh, record manufacturers to see if you know she could pay to have them trim it down. Hasn't haven't really gotten anywhere with that release. So make sure you always open up your albums and make sure that uh, there's no issues with them. Well, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Make sure you drop me a comment down below. Let me know how your record store day Black Friday went. You know the titles you decided to pick up. You know overall I thought it was a great day. I had a great time. You know, was it the best record store day? You know, maybe not. I think the list was maybe a little subpar this year. Still a lot of great titles that I picked up. Uh, probably, I, I might try to grab another one of those uh, Dr. Dre the Chronic releases just because, uh, man, I love that long box. It looks pretty sweet. Love to have a sealed copy of it. But let me know what you got, how your guys' day went. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me all thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. That's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace. Peace.